Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the inversions of four bar shape mechanism. So what is the mechanism? Mechanism it is the combination of links in which any one link is fixed and other links will be having relative motion. Here the fixed link it is also called as the frame. And inversion is nothing but for the given mechanism, if we are fixing different links, then you will be getting different output and it will present it to different mechanisms. So such type of phenomena is called as inversion of mechanism. And in this inversion, either of the links will be having input or output, depending upon the configuration of the mechanism. So this is four bar chain mechanism. The name itself indicates for the given mechanism, there will be four links in which here if you see one link is the fixed link, which is also called as the frame. Second link is the crank where it will be having total rotary motion. Third link will be coupler, which will be having oscillating motion. And the last link, it is the rocker, which is also called as the output link, will be having oscillating motion. So here, the basic configuration of this four bar chain mechanism is to convert rotary motion into oscillating motion. Rotary motion of crank will be converted into oscillating motion of the rock. And it will be having four turning pairs where this will be one, two, three, and four. And they are having surface or area contact. So they come under the category of the lower pairs. So what are the inversions of the four bar chain mechanism? So the first inversion is coupled wheel locomotive. Second will be the beam engine, which is also called as crank and lever mechanism. And third is Watts indicator mechanism. So what is coupled wheel locomotive? So here, if you see, there will be four links in which first link will be fixed, which is called as frame. And second link, which is the crank. Third is the coupler. And last is the rocker. But the length of the second link and the fourth link, they are same. And the length of the link first and third, it is same. So here, the second link, which will act now as a crank, will be having rotary motion. And the fourth link, which, which was previously having oscillating motion here, as the length of, of this fourth link is same as that of second link. So this will be having also rotary motion. So here, the rotary motion of crank will be converted into rotary motion of the output link. So this mechanism forms the coupled wheel locomotive and this mechanism we are observing in the railway wagon wheel where each of the wheels they are connected by this fixed frame and they will be having relative rotary motion. So such type of mechanism it is also called as double crank mechanism. Okay. So next inversion is beam engine and it is also called as crank and lever mechanism. So here the first link, if you see here, it is the fixed link. Second link will be crank. So crank will be having totally rotary motion. The third and the fourth link will be having oscillating motion. And this extension of this fourth link is the piston cylinder assembly. Or means this is the piston rod and this is the piston. Where this fourth thing, if it is oscillating, then it will give reciprocating motion to this piston rod. So simultaneously, here, the rotary motion of this crank will be converted into oscillating motion of 3 and 4. And this 3 and 4 oscillating motion will be ultimately given to this piston and piston rod, which will be reciprocating in this cylinder or guide wheels. So this mechanism is called as crank and lever mechanism, as here the crank will be having rotary motion and the lever will be having oscillating motion. Next is Watts indicator mechanism. So here, if you see, the first link is the fixed link, which is shown here. Second link is this link. Third is this. And fourth is the connecting second and third link. So here, now there will be no any crack, but these two link two and link three will be act as a lever. Link two and link three will act as a lever. And this extension link number four is attached to this piston rod and piston here. It is also called as plunger. Piston is also called as the plunger. The main aim of this Watts indicator mechanism, it is used to just measure the pressure inside the cylinder. It may be air or gas pressure. 
which is present inside this cylinder. So this link CD will be having extension at point E and here there will be pressure gauge, pressure scale measurement. As the pressure inside this cylinder, it goes on increasing. So it will try to move this piston or plunger in upward direction. And this motion will be given to this second, third link. And this pressure will be integrated directly on this scale. So here, if you observe, there will be no any crank, but here there are two levers. So this wax indicator mechanism, it is also called as the double lever mechanism, as they are having two levers. And say they will be having four turning pairs, which will be coming under the category of lower pair, as they are having surface or area contact. And this mechanism was developed by the scientist Watts. So this name was given as Watts integrator mechanism. Now here we will see the inversion of this four bar chain mechanism. Often the purpose of a mechanism is to transfer or transform a given input motion into a desired output motion. If we start with a four bar linkage, like this with given link lengths, then potentially we can fix any of these four links to derive four different four bar mechanisms. This process is called as inversion. Essentially inversion is nothing but a shift of observer from one link to another. So a different link appears fixed to him or her and a different input output relationship is observed. For example, in this case, we can give input to link AB, which is capable of complete rotation. So we would call it a crank. Then the output link CD only oscillates, giving us a rocker. So here we have a crank rocker mechanism by fixing link AD. Now suppose we fix a different link, say link CD this time, then we will get a different input output relationship. So now we don't have any crank at all, but there are essentially two rockers moving like this. Let us see how we can represent the bare essential of what we did in a schematic manner. If we focus on these four revolute pairs, A, B, C, and D, and think of how far each one of them rotates, then we notice the pair A and B rotate completely. So I have marked it with complete green circles, while C and D rotate only partially. So I have marked them with partial red arcs. And then I have represented the links by a general schematic symbol like this arc. So this represents our linkage. Finally, we add which link is fixed with this notation and we have an inversion over here. Let us see how this notation or schematic representation describes our inversion. Here link AD is fixed. So let us say AB is our input. That would make CD the output. Since link AB is connected to a fully rotating uh, pin or a revolute pair, this will form a crank. While CD is connected to a partially rotating revolute pair, so it will only oscillate forming a rocker. So this is a crank rocker. Let us see another inversion. For that, we are going to fix link A, B. Here, if this is the input BC and AD is the output, then both are connected to a fully rotating pin and therefore both of them will be cranks. So we get a double crank and fixing link CD would put our input link 
as well as output link in contact with a partially rotating revolute pair and therefore both of them will become a rocker and then we will get a double rocker mechanism i am sure you will agree with me that inversion offers us an unbeatable deal of buy one get four free we start with a single linkage and get four mechanisms using inversion thank you